Hello and welcome to uh, the Vicar Study at St John's in Poole. It's good to have you with us. A particular welcome if you're new to St John's. This Sunday our services at St John's are at their usual times of 9 o'clock and 10.30 but we also recognise that not everybody's going to be able to attend in person so we're continuing our online ministry, hence this video. Uh, as well as the talk that I should give in a couple of minutes, uh, just unpacking a bit of scripture, then uh, I'll encourage you uh, to, to pray with me at the end and also to sing together the, uh, the songs that we're going to sing in church. You might like to sing these at home, which are, of course, are at the name of Jesus. Every knee shall bow. You're the word of God the Father. Be thou my vision. And will your anchor hold in the storms of life? Very Jesus-centred this week for obvious reasons, as we're, we'll see as we go, go along. Uh, without further ado, let me read the passage uh, the, for, for this week. This is John chapter 10. And uh, it's, you know, our, our section starts at verse 11. This is John 10 from verse 11. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand is not the shepherd who does not own the sheep. So when he sees the wolf coming, he abandons the sheep and runs away. Then the wolf attacks the flock and scatters it. The man runs away because he's a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep, and my sheep know me, just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that are not of this sheep pen. I must bring them also. They too will listen to my voice, and there shall be one flock and one shepherd. The reason my Father loves me is that I lay down my life, only to take it up again, no one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have authority to lay it down and authority to take it up again. This command I received from my father. The Jews who heard these words were again divided. Many of them said, He's demon-possessed and raving mad. Why listen to him? But others said, These are not the sayings of a man possessed by a demon. Can a demon open the eyes of the blind? After all, Jesus is just here, a blind man. Um, then came the festival of the dedication at Jerusalem. It was winter, and Jesus was in the temple courts, walking in Solomon's coronade. The Jews who were there gathered around him, saying, How long will you keep us in suspense? If you are the Messiah, tell us plainly. Jesus answered, I did tell you, but you do not believe. The works I do in my Father's name testify about me, but you do not believe because you are not my sheep. My sheep listen to my voice. I know them, and they follow me. I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish. No one will snatch them out of my hand. My Father who has given them to me is greater than all. No one can snatch them out of my Father's hand. I and the Father are one. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now, over the last few weeks, we've looked at various aspects of the person of Jesus. I've described it as like putting together the pieces of a, a jigsaw and uh, hopefully making a picture that looks like the one on the box. We started with the Magi bringing their gifts of gold, frankincense and myrrh, and we considered the reasons for those gifts. And we moved on to think about Jesus as a teacher with authority, then as a miracle worker doing mighty deeds. And along the way, we've seen Jesus described as the eternal word, the word that was in the beginning. Last Sunday, we thought about the word Messiah and all that means God's anointed king and so on. Today, we're trying to put all the pieces together and we're reaching, if you like, the climax of this, this series on the person of Jesus. And that is wrapped up in today's Gospel reading, that particularly that last verse. That last verse, a quick reminder, it says, I and the Father 
are one. Now, uh, in in the church service, our first reading is going to be one of a, a reading of Psalm eight, which reminds us of how majestic and glorious God is. He made the heavens above, the Milky Way, and so on, and also the earth beneath and all its occupants. Yet somehow, all of that God is poured into the person of Jesus. He's the embodiment of God the Father. So there's some there's a metaphysical unity between the Father and the Son. It's rather like uh, when in John eight fifty eight, then uh, Jesus says, "Before Abraham was born, I am." That's mind boggling, and that's a word that we we looked at uh, a few weeks ago. Jesus is acting in the Father's name with the Father's power. Of course, he was sent by the Father into the Father's world. And Jesus describes himself as the good shepherd. He does that in verse 11. We heard that right at the beginning of our passage. And then he, he repeats himself. He does it again in verse 14. And he contrasts uh, the good shepherd with, uh, first of all, the hired hand, who's happy to look after the sheep so long as it's not too arduous or too dangerous. But as soon as the wolf comes and there is danger, then the hired hand runs away and leaves the sheep to face their fate alone. And that's just the hired hand. In verses 1 to 10, which is come just before this passage, and actually we're going to look at in our service in a couple of weeks, then Jesus contrasts himself not just with the hired hand, but with bad shepherds. And he refers to the Pharisees as bad shepherds. We'll see that more in a couple of weeks' time in our family service. Now, shepherds, um, we have quaint ideas sometimes about shepherds in England, but uh, certainly shepherds in Israel, Palestine at that, at that time were not gentle characters. They were quite rugged people existing on the margins, outside the villages, on, on the hillsides and so on, looking after their flock, but not quite being made welcome in respectable society and it's in it's jesus uses that word advisedly uh, to talk about himself as good shepherd um he describes himself as good shepherd and he predicts that he will lay down his life for the sheep that's how um how close the relationship is between the shepherd and the sheep and that's what qualifies jesus to be the good shepherd he lays down his life for his sheep um, there's something close uh, about the relationship between sheep and shepherd think about a shepherd with the sheep uh, slung over his shoulders and there's also something uh, close yeah that, that you might want to think actually that yeah go, goes deeper the shepherd knows his sheep and the sheep recognize their shepherd more of that too when we get to our, our family service in a couple of weeks time anyway from verse 19 onwards then people start chewing over jesus's words and some of them thought he was deluded it's true then well, it was true then and it is true today too uh, some people in verse 24 um, uh, ask him to uh, spell things out a bit more clearly. Uh, I'll just just read that. Uh, verse 24. Ugh. Page always flicks, doesn't it? How long will you keep us in suspense if you're the Messiah? Tell us plainly. So they worked it out, but they're not quite sure. And he ha they don't think he said clearly enough. Anyway, Jesus then answers in verse 25. He says, I did tell you, but you did not believe. The works I do in my Father's name testimony, testify about me. So words and works are uh, going together there. And uh, you know, we, we saw when we thought about Jesus as a teacher in our series, 
uh, we saw that he was drawing thousands of people to him on the hillside um, because he was a teacher who had authority. Uh, not like the teachers that they were used to, he had his own authority. Now Jesus' words, and I said his words and his deeds went together, his words should have been more than enough for people to make up their mind, but of course he doesn't stop there. He goes on and he says, it, well, I just read it in verse 25, he says, says that the, the, the works as well as the words speak of him, the things he was doing. Of course, at this point, he's just healed a blind man, and that's why this say, he says the things he does here. And he, 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 when he does that healing, he does it in full view of people, but um, he follows it immediately with some challenging words about spiritual blindness. And there are people who, who won't almost refuse to see, refuse to hear, what Jesus has to say. That's what he refers to as spiritual blindness. Now, throughout his life and ministry, Jesus mixed um, his words and deeds about literal things with words and deeds about deeper things. And he left people to put the pieces together, as I mentioned that we're doing, I do that for themselves, put the pieces together to join up the dots. And, uh, and so we come to the end of our series and we're making up our mind, really, about the person of Jesus. That's what we should be doing. Let's put, let's put these pieces together and see what they make. Uh, I want to return to what I said about the relationship between the shepherd and the sheep. There's a certain mutuality here. It cuts two ways. Think about the... Um, the uh, longing that God expresses many times in the Old Testament that the people, his people, should be his people and that he should be their God. That is God's longing. There's a certain mutuality about, about that relationship. It's not that we can in any way earn our salvation uh, because only Jesus gives us that by his grace. But uh, there is a certain mutuality in this ongoing relationship. The Father and the Son share that longing for that close relationship. And Jesus makes that clear in verses 28 and 29 uh, in, in our passage. And I'll put verse 27 up on the screen uh, as, as, as I end this in church. By saying, by, it emphasizes that my sheep hear my voice. I know them and they know me. They not only know me, but they also follow me, Jesus is saying. What it amounts to is that we're putting together the pieces and we're working towards that climax where Jesus says, I and the Father are one. Incidentally, it's a great verse to come to look at if you ever find yourself in conversation um, maybe with a Muslim who says oh Jesus didn't claim to be God he's just a prophet well actually he does he says I and the father are one he said that and he was executed because of things like that I want to finish this morning by thinking about how we can apply uh, what it is, what that verse 27 says, how we can hear Jesus' voice, how can we hear him, how can we know him, how can we follow him? Well, a big chunk of that is in things we do in our quiet time, reading our Bible and taking time to pray, working on that uh, close relationship, and also, I guess, responding to Jesus response to what, what what the greatest commandment is to love God and love our neighbor loving God and loving our neighbor that's following him so with that in mind shall we pray Lord thank you for the ways that you reveal yourself so fully in the person of Jesus he is the good shepherd as he speaks, we hear your voice. 
You are our pastor. We thank you for that. Thank you that you care for us so much. Thank you that you show it in your words and you show it in your actions. And if we're ever in doubt about the way you care about us, the way you love us, all we have to do is to look at, to think out the cross. Thank you, Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, sorry for the times when we haven't put together the jigsaw of who Jesus is in the right way. Maybe sometimes, Lord, we're sorry for the times when we have um, four pieces which don't fit together to match our idea of what we'd like you to be like. But you're not like that. We're sorry, Lord, when we've tried to make you like that. Sorry, Lord, for the times when we've gone wandering off like those sheep straying away from their good shepherd. Lord, thank you that you pursue us and you want us back. That's the kind of God you are. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Please, Lord, prompt us to keep listening for your voice, paying attention and taking time to reflect on what you say, to follow you closely and infuse our Bible reading and our prayers in such a way that our relationship with you is what it should be. Please lead us, Lord, and prompt us to follow. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we pray together the Lord's Prayer, which uh, Jesus taught his followers. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. See you next time.